Everybody loves cheap stuff, but the question is, is the cheap stuff always worth it? Well, that's what we always try to answer here on Cheap But Worth It. In fact, gaming laptops are one example. They can be super pricey, so pricey that they can run north of $5,000 in some respects, and maybe not even be that great at performance. But what about less expensive ones? What about those gaming laptops that are like, say, sub a thousand? Are there any good ones there? I mean, that's a question we get asked all the time. What kind of performance are we gonna get from like a sub $1,000 laptop? Well, I wanna to talk to you about one that we found, and that's the Asus Tough Gaming 17.3 inch gaming laptop that we got on sale for Black Friday from Best Buy. Now, this is a gaming laptop that we bought so we could test it. Currently, it was on sale at $679.99 with an MSRP of $899.99. So how does it run? Is it actually a good laptop? Well, we're gonna find out right now, right here on Robitech. So the gaming laptop has a special place in the world as they're portable, some are lightweight, some can run AAA titles in 4K, and some can do everything a desktop can, AKA desktop replacement laptops. But you're gonna be paying a premium for laptops like that. But where does the sub $1,000 gaming laptop fit in this world? And what can it actually do? Well, we have this awesome new show and we decided to test that very question. Recently, Best Buy had a sale on the Asus Tough Gaming 17.3 inch gaming laptop for $679.99. And when I read the specs for this, I was like blown away. Now we decided this time, I was like, look, I have to buy this. This is what this show is about. We gotta buy it. We gotta put through our testing and find out if the CPU, GPU cooling and monitor were actually good or if literally this was going to just be a giant pile of techno trash. Now first, let's take a look at the specs of actually what came with the laptop. So we know what we're up against. Looking at the exterior of the laptop, it measures at 16 inches by 10.6 inches wide with one inch of thickness, coming in at just under six pounds. So this laptop is gonna be on the heavier side, mimicking the Gigabyte Aero 17 Creator laptop we reviewed right here. Now the CPU that comes with this model of the Asus Tough Gaming laptop is the 11th gen Core i5-11260H. We are interested and excited to test the CPU too, as we haven't actually had something with this in it before. Now the GPU, which is, this is the very interesting part for me, is the NVIDIA RTX 3050 with four gigabytes of VRAM. Now while it's only four gigabytes of VRAM, we are again excited to finally test the 3050 as it's a proprietary laptop GPU, and it doesn't look like it's going to make it to the desktop GPU anytime soon, to follow in the footsteps of like the 1050 Ti or the 1050. Now the system also comes comes with eight gigabytes of DDR4 SODIMM RAM in a one by eight configuration. That's right, not dual channel. Now the system has two slots and is expandable up to 32 gigabytes according to Asus's website. Now we also do have some parts listed down below if you are looking to upgrade this laptop if you were to pick one up for yourself. And we've got those listed down in the description below as well, which we actually tested and you'll get to hear a little bit more about that here in a bit. Spoiler! Now it is actually very easy to do. In fact, we're gonna show you how easy it is to replace the RAM a little bit later. Now the screen is 17.3 inches, which is a a lot of visual real estate. You've got 1920 by 1080 FHD IPS non-touch gaming monitor as most gaming monitors don't actually have touch and it's 144 Hertz, which is actually pretty cool. Now, can games run at 144 Hertz? That has yet to be seen. For your storage in your system, you actually get a Intel 670p 512 gig NVMe SSD. And what's pretty cool about this is that there are actually two M.2 slots and one supports PCIe Gen 3 and the second supports PCIe Gen 4. There's also enough room for a two and a half inch SSD, but the laptop does not come with a SATA cable, so you will have to purchase one if you wanna add like a two and a half inch SSD in it. Again, much like the RAM, it's actually very easy to install a second M.2 and SSD, and we'll show you just how to do that as well here in a bit. Now there is no shortage of ports on this laptop, which is actually pretty cool given the price. It comes with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with DisplayPort, which is cool. It's got Thunderbolt 4 with DisplayPort. It's got an HDMI 2.0 port. It's got an RJ45 LAN port port for hardwiring your laptop and Wi-Fi 6 for wireless connectivity and also Bluetooth 5.2. So all of the newest bells and whistles. It's got three USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports, one 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. It's also got, of course, it's DC power in for your power cord. And according to the specs on Best Buy site, it says it does not have a front facing webcam. 
but digging into the specs on the ASUS site, it actually comes with a 720p webcam built in. I mean, even the picture on Best Buy site shows it with the webcam, and looking at the laptop, it does actually have a camera. Now opening the laptop, we indeed see that it does actually have a webcam, along with a full-size backlit keyboard, which means you have your main keyboard and a number pad on the right. Being a 17.3 inch laptop, we would expect nothing less. This ASUS laptop does come with DTS software, AI noise canceling technology, your typical built-in array microphone with two two and a half watt speakers. We aren't exactly looking for groundbreaking audio with this setup, but we do hope it's at least usable. And all right, there you have it. Everything inside and out for this Asus Tup Gaming laptop. Now, like every other laptop we reviewed, let's see how this thing actually performs. Now, before we get into the full test results on everything, let me explain what we did. First, we ran the test for an out of the box experience, meaning that we left in the eight gigs of RAM and we only updated NVIDIA GPU driver from 462.42 to 496.72. After we ran all of those benchmarks, we then upgraded the RAM to two by 16 or 32 gigabytes, and we updated the video driver from 492.72 to 497.09. And the results? Well, let's just say, prepare to be amazed. Let's dive in. Now, benchmarking our CPU, we ran the following tests for thermals, heaven, superposition, and valley, under load, and we could say that the CPU got as high as 91 degrees Celsius, which is kind of high. Would have liked to seen it in the 80s, as 91 is pretty high, but it is a budget laptop, so we didn't expect the cooling to be out of this world. However, the key thing is the CPU never throttled, which is perfect, and again, even though it's warm, the fact that we're getting no throttling and we never saw anything higher than that is actually pretty good. For the GPU, we saw the temp for the 3050 top out at 80 degrees Celsius, which is solid and kind of right where we want it to be at. The only thing really holding this GPU back is the four gigabytes of VRAM and not any thermal issues whatsoever. Now, sticking with the CPU and GPU for scoring, we ran the always popular Time Spy from 3D Mark. If you don't want to pay for it, Steam offers a free demo version for this, and you can actually find the link to that down in the description below. Now, the overall Time Spy score out of the three runs we ran was an even 5,000, which puts the combination of the Intel i5 11260H and the NVIDIA RTX 3050 right in the middle of the pack. Nothing special, but not a bad CPU score for all of this. Now, if you're gonna compare it to a desktop CPU, it puts it somewhere right around the AMD Ryzen 5 3500X. Again, not a super powerful processor, so don't expect it to handle everything you throw at it with bells and whistles. There are more tests we ran, such as Cinebench R23, which came in at 9411 for multi-core and 1392 for single core. What's interesting is that our Razer Blade 14 had the Ryzen 9 5900H, and it scored 11,886 and 1461 respectively. So the Intel i5 11260H isn't too far behind that if you're looking at just the overall numbers. Now for the GPU, the score in Time Spy was 4989, which puts this GPU on the low end of the newer mobile GPUs. Now comparing this to our 3070 Razer Blade 14, which we reviewed and you can check out right here, it scored 3800 points lower than that. Much like the CPU, this GPU isn't going to wow you with any performance, but again, it does do the job. I mean, it's cheap and we'll find out if it's worth it with our game scores next. Now, before we jump into the game scores, again, reminding you, we started with eight gigs, which is single channel RAM, and after that, we went to 32 gigs at two by 16, adding dual channel. So let's see actually how big of a difference that actually made. Now, we tested the following single player games, Shadow the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus, Dirt 5, Borderlands 3, and if you've been with the show for a while, you know that this has been our standard fare. For multiplayer slash battle royale games, we tested Apex Legends, Call of Duty Warzone, and of course, Fortnite. For Shadow the Tomb Raider, we ran it at the highest preset for graphical settings at 1080p, and we got an average of 48 frames per second, and this was with eight gigs. After upgrading to 32 gigs, it set it for dual channel, we got it to 81. That's right, I said 81 well above that golden 60 frames per second mark that makes this game worth playing. Just after a single game, the upgrade of the RAM in the system looks like it's well worth it. Let's see about the rest. For Metro Exodus, we got 13.29 frames and it barely ran with a single stick. After the upgrade, we saw a semi-respectable 40.96 frames per second. Now this test ran at 1080p at high settings with DLSS set to balance and ray tracing on high. Turn off ray tracing and you just might hit that 60 frames per second mark. For Dirt 5, we tested with 1080p at ultra graphic settings. We came in at 46.8 with eight gigs. And when we went to 32, we got a jump of 20 frames per second, hitting a solid 66.8, which is a great frame rate for racing. Borderlands 3 though, is a little bit of a different story. We're running at 1080p, again, highest graphical preset. Before the upgrade, we got 29.26. And afterwards, we got 33.83. Now, while we did see a jump in performance, we didn't see the jump like we did in other games. Okay, now let's talk about the multiplayer slash battle royale games. And to be 
be honest, the scores even before with eight gigs were actually impressive. Now we did three runs, tested all of them at 1080p with low visual settings to again, maximize frames per second. For Apex Legends, we got an average frame rate of 73. Not too shabby by any means. And after the upgrade to 32 gigs, we jumped that up to 121.5 frames per second. You're talking about an almost 50 FPS increase just going from single channel to dual channel at 32 gigs. Pretty awesome. Now on Call of Duty Warzone in the new Caldera map, before the upgrade, we got 65.4 frames per second. And after we got 85.7. Either way, those are respectable frames per second, and we'll take the 85.7 any day of the week for this game. The game is so poorly optimized, you even hit 100 frames per second in certain areas on the map. Now, during our three runs, we played it for an average of 14 minutes each time, so it wasn't just drop in, hide, drop out, and get killed. We ran around, exploded things, and did all of the normal stuff, and never saw it drop below 60 frames per second, which is great. Now, Fortnite, well, Fortnite pretty much runs on everything, including a potato. But for the sake of it, before the upgrade, we got an awesome 105 0.6 FPS, and afterwards we got 159.4, which now makes complete use of that 144 hertz refresh rate. Yay! Okay, Roby, in this talk of single channel versus dual channel RAM, what's the actual difference? Well, let's sum it up as we could actually talk about this for days and maybe even have a future episode on it, but for RAM speed and the differences, here you go. Let's say you have one stick of eight gigabits of RAM at 2133. That means you have 17 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Now, if you have a pair of those exact same DIMMs, so again, 2133, eight gigs, then you're going to have double the bandwidth at 34 gigabytes per second. Now, given the fact that we went from 2133 in a single stick of eight gig to 16 gigabyte sticks at 3200, we not only increase the speed, but we also increase the memory bandwidth by quite a bit, thus giving us much higher scores. Now let's say, hey, Roby, I wanted to buy this laptop and I wanted to upgrade the RAM or add an M.2. How hard is it? Well, actually it's super easy. And here's a quick rundown of how to do it. Now, before you do anything, make sure you have the right tools to actually do this work. You can actually pick up an iFixit like Mako 64-bit kit, and you can actually see a link down to that in the description below. Now, after it's turned over and you've got it on your nice, awesome mat, like the Robitech mat right here, you have a total of 11 screws on the bottom to remove with the bottom right screw not coming out all the way. Carefully take the bottom off. Under the cover, it will look like this. Now to upgrade your RAM, you find the RAM cover, which is right here. Now it's paper thin and it is flexible, so it's easy to bend the way you need to. And look for these clips to bend out to remove the RAM. Line up the PCBs, just like replacing the RAM in the desktops, and press down and you get that nice, solid click. Now do this for both sticks and boom, you're done. You've successfully installed RAM in your Asus Tough Laptop that we're showing here. Now while you're there, if you have the M.2 to install, it goes right here. The M.2 screw is already there. Make sure you remove it, sliding in your M.2 by lining up the PCB as well, and you screw it in. Snap the bottom cover on, tighten all the screws, plug it in, and absolutely enjoy. Make sure after you install your M.2, you boot your system, go to disk management, and initialize your drive and create a volume so you can actually use it. If you want to see how to do that, you can check out our video on that right here. All right, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've showed you how to upgrade it. But in the end, the big question is, Roby, is the laptop worth it? Given we paid $679.99 when this laptop was on sale during Black Friday, and we only spent $150 on the RAM to upgrade it, that brought our total to $829.99. And we paid about $150 for the two terabyte NVMe we added, because we needed storage. That took the overall total to just shy of $1,000 at $979.99. That laptop at that price is completely worth it. Now let's say you couldn't get it on sale, right? You're looking at the MSRP price of $899.99. Even if you are just upgrading the RAM on it and getting the laptop at 1050, then the price I can again definitely say this is worth recommending. It's when you go and decide to put in like a two terabyte NVMe drive, well then you're looking at $1,300. And then it kind of gets a little iffy if you can still recommend it. Again, it's a 3050 with two terabytes of storage, 32 gigs of RAM, still a very beefy laptop, but there are other gaming laptops out there with like 3060s in it that you can find good RAM slash storage options in for sub $1299 or $1399 with a better CPU, such as the MSI GF65, we can check out down in the description below. But if you can score the laptop for $679.99, like we did, upgrade the RAM and storage and keep it at under a thousand, then you better jump on it. This laptop is a steal at that price, a complete steal. Ooh, and now it might be time for me to go to jail.
Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope this gave you all the information you needed. And if you have any other questions, definitely ask us down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. Also, make sure you check out our amazing Discord community over at discord.gg slash Robitech where you can talk about this laptop or any other PC-related question or even tech-related questions. There's over 14,000 people there and they love to chat about things just like this. Also, follow us on all the socials, TikTok, Instagram, anywhere, at Robitech, you can find us. We hope you really enjoy this episode and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Cheap But Worth It.